the idea of the book is really like a gift to me five, six years ago. Like, <laughs> okay. these are all the shortcuts that you <laughs> eventually find out the hard way. Like, here's if I had to teach it to you again, here's how I would teach it. And kind of the goal is to demystify the field a little bit of privacy engineering and basically just of technical privacy in general and get more people into it because I think it should be like more accessible easier to understand, uh, fully like, if we want to use the term democratize, but available for more people. Like data protection versus data privacy. Those are actually also different fields, right? They're overlapping fields, but data privacy is also like a social uh, and cultural understanding of, of privacy and maybe also relates to individual experiences and feelings and like how we want to share things and how we want to change how we share things. And then we have data protection, which is really like a lot of the laws around data privacy are around data protection. We have all these like neighboring things. And I think if you're just an architect or a software person, you may just think like, oh, those are all the same words and they mean all the same stuff. And that's not your fault. Like probably lots of people have used them interchangeably with you. But let's correct some of some yeah. of the problems here. And then we have anonymization and I'm here to break it to everybody, and I'm sorry. Anonymization actually doesn't exist. Like, if, if we collect data, if we collect information, and we release information, there is actually mathematically no guarantee that we cannot have somebody learn something about the individual. But I think what is really fascinating with differential privacy, that this is the first time when you can think about, let's say, the data protection as a specific scale. Mm -hmm. So it's not, let's say, or protected or not protected anymore. Mm -hmm. So could you explain more about that? Because I think that's the most tremendous concept that is introduced in the chapter two of your book. Cool thing about differential privacy, it's all tunable. This is where like the thinking and privacy really overlaps with security and infosec thinking, mm -hmm. because it's about what is the actual risk? What's the threat model here when we release this data? What are we worried about? And that's the first chapter of the book is like, if you don't have functioning data governance, you can't do any of this cool stuff. So if you're in a huge org, um, and this is one of the things that they did at Google is for data scientists, you have to first prove that your experiment idea works with differentially private data wow. before you can get access to, to the, the real, real data. Wow. Privacy loss of the individual is information gain of the person querying. In my head, you know, it's like this slider which going is like how much privacy loss we could afford to get meaningful results at the end mm -hmm. versus how more we prefer to lose to get, let's say, better results. So that's, let's say, the space mm -hmm. where we are operating. Um, interestingly enough, some of the core differential privacy attacks that have been proven are basically implementation errors. Even if right now you call it infra engineering, you put it in the architecture, you put it in software, wherever you put it, the concepts of privacy engineering, which is making these technologies easier to use and more available for the entire organization, that stuff has to be built in to avoid these shadow IT systems and these workarounds that people find because people need to do their jobs. Subscribe to the GoTo YouTube channel now and join the experts in person or online at any upcoming GoTo conference using the promo code BOOKCLUB. Visit gotopia.tech to learn more.